From the very first shift of my very first job, the only thing I could ever think about was, there's no way I can do this for the next 50 years of my life. I hated everything about it. I hated having menial tasks delegated to me by egomaniacs. I hated having to stand on my feet for hours on end when I was dead tired. I hated having to kiss the asses of rude customers. I hated starting early. I hated staying late. And most importantly, I hated knowing that I was missing out on doing all the things I wanted to do because I was stuck working. I ate his little face. I ate his guts. And I ate the way he's always barking. I remember even at 17 years old, wondering how people do this for their whole lives. How they become permissive of having their time stolen and being bossed around like petty toddlers being told when they're allowed to eat and take a shit. Only coercion by threat of poverty and homelessness could create such a meek, timid, frankly spineless population of workers who answer every asinine request with a yes sir or yes ma'am. I said fuck you and your eyebrows. And I realized right then and there that if I couldn't find a way around this, if I couldn't find some sort of a cheat code for life, I had no interest in living. And yes, I completely recognize how dramatic and morbid and over the top that sounds, but in my opinion, that's not living. That's just existing as a corporate drone, as a puppet. In the time since, I've had many other jobs, some much worse, some a lot better, but my sentiment has never really been shaken by the varying level of misery that I experienced in any particular job. Whether I worked for good people or assholes, whether there were strict rules or lenient ones, whether the job was really stressful or really chill, the fact remained the same. I was stuck spending my time around people I didn't want to be around, doing things I didn't want to be doing, and missing out on way too much of my life. When I was in my early 20s, I got my first full-time job. It paid me just over minimum wage. So after taxes, it worked out to about $23,000 a year for 40 hours a week of standing on my feet. And that didn't even count for the probably 20 plus hours a week that I spent commuting, packing lunch, and generally just thinking about how miserable I was because I had to go to work. In fact, if I'm being honest, that's pretty much the only thing I could ever think about. Even on my days off, I would just lie there commiserating about having to go back to work in a couple days to such a degree it didn't even allow me to enjoy the limited free time that I had. What I didn't understand was why my coworkers seemed to be so much less bothered by it than I was, or at least less vocal in their complaints than I was. And then it dawned on me, while I was working hard and squirreling away every single dollar that I made, all my coworkers were going out after work every night. They're going out for food, they're going out to the bar, they're going out to the mall. And maybe the problem was me. Maybe I just wasn't enjoying the fruits of my labor. But I was keenly aware of the fact that $23,000 a year was not very much money and did not go very far, and it would go approximately nowhere if I was spending it all on food and alcohol and clothing. One day while talking to one of my work friends, the conversation turned to the fact that it was very rare that I ever went to the bar with them after work, and that on the rare occasions that I did, that no one was ever able to convince you to get drunk. I explained to them how, first and foremost, I just didn't like getting drunk. Like I just, it makes me feel sick and I don't enjoy it. But beyond that, I just saw it as a massive waste of money. And to be totally clear, this wasn't a hostile or judgmental conversation in any way. I totally am open to whatever people want to do with their money and their lives and it's their business. But I was just trying to express the fact that to me, it just seemed super wasteful and it wasn't how I wanted to spend my time and my money. And my friend responded with something along the lines of like, yeah, I get it, I don't disagree, it makes perfect sense, but after dealing with all that bullshit all day, I just need to go out and forget about it. But I saw it differently. Rather than going and blowing all of my money just trying to forget about the day, I would personally be more inclined to just not work the shift at all. If you're gonna wind up without any money left over, the whole thing just seemed kind of futile to me. But that idea, that idea lit a fire inside of me and I started to see it as a game. Basically for every shift I could work without spending any money, that's one less shift I'd have to work later on. Obviously it's not that cut and dry, but you understand what I'm alluding to, right? Money can be exchanged for goods and services. I started to reevaluate my life and all my habits. Out of all the things that I would spend money on on a day-to-day -day basis, how many of them were actually important and valuable to me? And while I didn't necessarily realize it at the time, this is actually the core principle of minimalism. It's just reevaluating your priorities. I started to assess the value of things, not in dollars, but in hours worked. So I would look at something and instead of saying, oh, it's gonna cost me X amount of dollars, I would say it's gonna cost me X amount of hours worked. Would I rather work eight hours to pay for this thing or would I rather not work eight hours and not have this thing, just have the day off instead? And for me, to be honest, this can get out of hand pretty quickly because there are very few things in the world that I like more than not working. The promise of free time and autonomy is enough to lure my attention away from almost anything. So I have to be conscientious and I have to have enough self-awareness to not allow this to turn into a personal challenge of self-deprivation in favor of sleeping in and taking my dog for long walks. But goddamn, do I like sleeping in and taking my dog for long walks. Eventually, I decided enough was enough and I went on to start my own business, which gave me way more control over my life. It allowed me to decide how much I want to charge for my time and how many hours I want to work in a given day or week and which clients I do and don't want to work with, which is wonderful. I no longer need to ask permission to use the bathroom, I get to eat when I'm hungry, and I don't have to explain myself to anybody when I need a day off. More importantly, I've learned what I do and don't value. 
There's some things that are absolutely important to me and that I'm happy to work for and invest in. Things like Levi, things like my house, going to concerts, and all you can eat avocado sushi for sure. And on the flip side, there's a lot of things I just don't care about. Things like status symbols and impressing others, having the newest gadgets, having the greatest and latest and flashiest and most expensive of everything. It's just not important to me at all. And so by acknowledging this, I'm able to have a really realistic idea of what my monthly budget looks like, how much money I need to make to cover my bills, and subsequently how many hours I have to work to accomplish that. Very rarely do I find something that I deem worthy of working overtime, but on the odd occasion that I do earn more money than I need, I can save and invest that so that hopefully one day I can retire while I'm still young. None of this would have been possible without minimalism, because minimalism has been my gateway drug to simple living, to personal freedom, to financial independence, and ultimately to being able to build a good life for myself. I'm a big believer in the fact that minimalism looks different for everybody because we're all individuals with different needs and priorities and different lifestyles. I'm also a big believer in the fact that it's ever changing because so are we, our needs are always changing. And so while I don't think that everybody needs to live in a loft with white walls and no TV, I do think that minimalism can help everybody. That everyone can benefit from owning a little less, saving a little more, and designing the life that they want for themselves. But of course, this is just my story and I would love to hear yours. If you already practice minimalism, what led you here? And if this is something you're just starting to learn about, what are your motivations? Let's open up a discussion in the comments below because I would love to know your story. If you enjoyed this video at all or found any value in it, please go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate all the likes and all of the comments you guys leave for me. It absolutely means a lot. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing. I know that in the last week or two, I've gotten a handful of new subscribers. So thank you guys so much for stopping by, checking out my channel. And to all my new subscribers, I say, What's up? I really appreciate you guys being here, sticking around, watching my videos. I upload a new one every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, Toronto time. Feel free to follow me on Instagram as well if you'd like to. Other than that, thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next week.